linear impulse and momentum so today we are going to talk about conservation of momentum and and solve problems related to that so let me just summarize what we did last time we did principle of linear impulse and momentum so the initial momentum plus the work done sorry the effect of force applied over time t1 to t2 produces a change in momentum which is mv2 so that equation there is a vector equation for a particle you will have you can apply the equation in the x direction and apply the same equation in the y direction or you can write it as a vector like i have done over there so the other thing is conservation of uh, momentum Okay, so when two particles interact, then the the net momentum of the system is always conserved or is constant. So Let's say this is V. Uh, let's call this V A and V B. That's M A M B. Are the masses? So those two balls they collide, and as a result of the collision, they're going to end up with a new velocity. Uh, let me call this V one A and V one B. I don't want to call it v1 and v2 because that will confuse you with the first equation I wrote there. Okay, so uh, conservation of momentum says that for the net system, okay, the momentum is conserved. So summation m i v i is constant. Okay. but the summation is across all the bodies involved in the collision so for this particular example ma v1a plus mb v1b equals ma v2a plus mb v2b where uh, v1a v1b Our velocities this is the velocity P4 collision and V to A V to B is velocity after collision. Okay, something like this is incorrect. So if you write m1 v1 a is m m a v1 a is m b v uh, 2 sorry m a v 2 a this is incorrect. You cannot do that because uh, when two particles interact, there is an impulsive force, and uh, this equation uh, just does not hold true. You can only do it for the net system of particles you cannot do it for individual particles in fact uh, you can write an equation for the mass a but that will involve the force they have have the impulse in it so 
the correct way to write this would be F, which is the interactive impulsive force uh, equals F D T is M A B two uh, A minus V one A. And similarly, if that force is the force which is applied on A, and there will be an equal and opposite force F dt on B. So you could also write T2, T1 is, sorry, F dt. everything is a vector is m b v to b minus v to a okay in fact if you sum the two expressions right you'll end up with the conservation of momentum so if this is one this is uh, 2a and 2b add 2a to 2b to get 1. So, uh, so there's another tool which we'll use to solve problems when particles coll are colliding. Uh, we'll use the conservation of momentum on the complete system in order to find, usually you're given the velocities before they collide and you're told to find the velocities after they collide. And so you can use the conservation of uh, momentum to do that. So the recipe is essentially the same like last time. You gotta establish a coordinate frame, draw a free body diagram. Okay, now the free body diagram is going to be uh, something like this. This is a free body diagram because it has forces. Well, it, it actually has an impulse, right? And uh, then apply the conservation of momentum. Sometimes you have to apply the principle of impulse and momentum. So principle of impulse and momentum, which is this equation here, tells you uh, more about the force, which, which, which uh, acts between the particles when they're colliding. Okay, so uh, let's solve let's solve some problems on this. A question. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's right. It's one B. What, sorry, one, two, A, should be two, A. Uh, sorry, so it's two, two, so it's B, so it has to be, it has to be B, because this is the equation for B, and it will be the initial velocity. So B two B minus B one B. Okay, so here is first problem. So the 20 gram bullet, this is 20 gram, is traveling at 400 meters per second when it becomes embedded in the 2 kg stationary block. Determine the distance the block will slide before it stops. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the block and the plane is mu k is 0.2. So mu k is 0 0.2. Uh, so you got to find the distance the block will move when it uh, till before it comes to stop. Okay, so the bullet goes in, penetrates the block, stays inside the block. Now, because of the momentum imparted by the bullet, the whole system consisting of the bullet and the block is going to start moving to the right. And because there's friction, friction is going to oppose motion of the complete systems. And eventually, the system is going to come to rest. So you're going to find 
the distance s mu. Okay, so really if you see this problem, there are two parts to it. The first part is uh, figuring out what is the net velocity of the complete system once the bullet gets embedded in the particle. And once you have that, uh, once you know the velocity of the complete system, then you have to solve uh, what problem? A kinetic problem or a kinematic problem? A kinetic problem because there's friction force. So that friction force is going to decelerate the mass. So this is a problem where uh, they've actually combined two concepts. The first part is conservation of momentum is what we're going to use. But the second part is something which you've learned way back in uh, in probably chapter, I don't know, this the third chapter, F equals MA. Okay, so let's um, use the principle of well, conservation of momentum to solve for the velocity. Okay, I, I'm going to call this MB for bullet. I'm going to call this M capital B for block. So initially, and let's assume that that is the right side is positive x. Okay, so that way I can write the velocity with the correct sign. So mass of b times velocity of b, and I'm going to write this as a scalar equation because the entire motion is in one direction. It's in a, it's one dimensional problem, but it's not in two dimensions. So vb is to the right, so that's positive equals, uh, well, there's mb plus velocity of b, but b, that is v capital B, is 0, equals mb, m small b, m capital B times v, okay? And the reason is, uh, I'm writing it that way, is because after after the bullet hits the particle or the block, it gets embedded in the block and it moves as a complete assembly. So that's zero. So V is M B V B divided by M small b plus M capital B. And everything in here is known, 2 kg, 20 grams, and VB is 400. So you can just write it if you want, it's point zero 0.02. That's the conversion of 20 grams to kilograms. M small b is 0 0.02 plus M capital B is 2 times velocity of B is 400. So if you do the math, it is 3.96024 meters per second. So if you can, you, you, see, you see the tremendous reduction in the velocity. Initial velocity of the bullet is 400 meters per second, but once, it's, once it gets embedded, the complete system now moves with a velocity of only about 4 meters per second. So this is without correction? Without what? Without correction. No, this is, okay, so there is two parts to it. One is the bullet getting embedded in the block. The bullet gets embedded in the block, and that particular penetration, we assume, occurs very quickly. So friction doesn't act to do anything in that case. So once the bullet gets embedded, now it has a velocity of 4 meters per second. Now we're going to solve the the problem with friction. Yeah, so the thing about collision is usually collision takes a finite time, usually typically milliseconds, but we got to assume that it takes uh, even less than a nanosecond. It's not going to influence the, the, when the block, the bullet gets embedded in the block, that particular period of time, the block does not move. That's the assumption we make, and that's an assumption which we we'll always make in this class. We're going to assume that first this event is going to happen of collision, compute the velocity, and then proceed to do the computations. And that's, uh, it's, again, it's an assumption, but it's a very good assumption. Uh, most of the time it holds true. Okay, so we've got the velocity, and now it's a traditional uh, uh, problem where this, this mass has a velocity of uh, four meters per second approximately, 
and you got to find how fast or slow it well how much time how much distance it moves before it comes to stop so i'm going to draw the free body diagram this is going to be m small b plus m capital b times g because the particle has got embedded uh, there's going to be friction force so uh, summation in the well, friction force is mu k times the normal force but mu k n n is m b plus m small b times g okay so that is a friction force uh, f x equals m a x so the only force acting in the x direction is friction force so f f and it's acting in the direction opposite to the x positive x axis so it's negative right this is the positive axis as i shown earlier <coughs> equals uh, mass which is m small b plus m capital b times g sorry times a so ff is minus mu k m small b plus m m capital b plus m small b g equals m b plus m small b a uh, which means that the acceleration is simply mu k times g okay so we've got the acceleration and now it's a kinematic problem So we're going to find the distance uh, when we're given the velocity. So when you have velocity as a function of distance, you can uh, use this formula, right? So initial velocity is is uh, 3.906 square. The final velocity is zero. Plus uh, acceleration is two times minus mu k g times s where mu k is 0.2 g is 9.81 so s comes out to be comes out to be exactly four four meters Okay, so again, if the, in this problem you're asked to find velocity as a function of distance, and I, as I told repeatedly, when you want to find velocity as a function of distance, the other thing you can use, the direct way to do it is to use principle of work and energy. So if you use principle of work and energy, T1 plus U12 is T2. Initial velocity is. Uh, half m m small b plus m capital b v square oh, sorry we, we know this plus uh, work done by friction it's going to be minus f f times s equals uh, t2 which is going to be zero okay so let's see what you get here half m small b plus half plus m capital B V square minus uh, the friction force is right here. Sorry, it's right here. It's mu k times, okay, it's mu k times m small b plus m capital B times s equals zero. And uh, what you see is it's kind of interesting that this cancels off with this. And you, what you end up with is V square divided by two minus mu k s which is nothing but which is the same as this expression right this is the same as this expression I should put it here same as this expression where the final velocity is zero right? 
Now you could also use, so there are a number of ways you can do this really. You can also use uh, principle of the linear impulse and momentum, uh, but then you'll have to add, you'll add an extra step. What happens if you use the principle of impulse and momentum, uh, principle of impulse and momentum, which is this equation. This is usually good when you want to solve for velocity as a function of time because you see that there's velocity and there's time. So if you use principle of impulse and momentum, uh, you will know the final velocity, you know the initial velocity, you can find the time it takes for the block to come to rest. And then once you know the time, you can then find the distance using the distance time formula in kinematics. S is ut plus half a d squared. So you add two steps. But the direct way, as I said, is to, to find all expressions which, which do, uh, which find velocity as a function of distance. So this is a di direct way to do it. Uh, two ways. Any, any questions on that? Okay. Next question. So block A has a mass of five kilograms. Five kilograms and placed on a smooth triangular block B. So this is smooth. Uh, in fact, this is smooth as well as this. So, so there's no friction. Having a mass of 30 kg. So this thing has 30 kilogram mass. If the system is released from rest, find the distance B moves from point O when A reaches the bottom. So when A reaches here, find the distance moved by B to the, obviously to the right. And uh, find the find the velocity of A and B when A reaches the bottom. So when A reaches the bottom, so when A comes over here, you're going to find the velocity of A as well as velocity of B. Uh, and you're going to neglect the size of the block A. Okay, so what's happening here is there's a ramp. And uh, this way. It's, yeah, it's just, so you release the block and there's no friction here, there's no friction there. Because the block is, so the free bar diagram of the block will look something like, uh, for, for the ramp will look like there will be a normal force because this block is placed on that, right? So then the block will have a normal force that way. So that normal force from the block to the ramp, right, it has the X component to the Y component. The X component actually pushes it to the left as the block moves down. So the ramp is pushed to the left as the block moves down. And what happens is eventually uh, this will go down, but that will also move to the left, to the right, here, right. And you're going to find the velocity when this is down, the velocity of this ramp to the left, the velocity of block. And you're going to find the, what is the distance, the distance move on the horizontal plane. So again, uh, the reason there is no friction over on the ground, no friction in the ramp. When the block is placed on the ramp, because those two interact, there's going to be a normal force between the block and the ramp. That normal force has a couple in the x direction. That force pushes the ramp to move to the left, while the block moves to the ground. In the, in, in the process, the block accelerates and it has a velocity you're going to find that velocity of the ramp when the block moves down and the distance moves by the ramp when the block has moved down. Okay. So what we're going to do is um, this is a problem where you got to, if you want to use the conservation of momentum, right? There is there is two part two particles which have interactive forces. Uh, if you think of the whole system, the two things as a whole, then you can use conservation of momentum. But to use the conservation of momentum, you got to find the velocities of the block and the ramp. So I'll try to first set up the velocities of the block and the ramp in the so that I'm able to write the conservation of momentum. So let's. Right, the velocity of block B, it's going to be, before we write that, I'm going to assume a coordinate frame. Let's assume that X is to the right, 
and y is the top. So velocity of b, now you know something about well, uh, velocity has a magnitude and direction, it's a vector. You know that the velocity of b has to be along the x-axis. It cannot go on the y-axis, right? Because it's against the ground. So we know the direction. What we don't know is the magnitude of the velocity. So that's an unknown. In fact, we'll try to find what that velocity is. That's one of the things which is asked. The velocity of A is a bit complicated. It is, it is actually moving along the incline, okay? But it's also moving, when you see it from, as a complete system, it's also moving to the left. So in this case, a better way to write the velocity of A, so you could write velocity of A is an unknown magnitude and an unknown direction. That's one way to do it. And then solve for the magnitude and direction. But the other way to write the velocity of A is to look at um, velocity of A with respect to velocity of B. So the formula for, so you remember that we had written down this formula long time back. This is the relative velocity formula. Velocity of a point is velocity of some other point plus velocity of one that first point with respect to the second point. So velocity of B is, we already wrote it down, it's velocity B times I. And the velocity of A with respect to B, the way to think about velocity of A with respect to B is what is the velocity of A when B is held fixed? It's not allowed to move. So if B is held fixed and A is moving, then the velocity of A is going to be along the ramp downwards. So you know the relative velocity. Its direction is known, but its magnitude is unknown. So velocity of A with respect to B, this thing is going to have this direction, 30 degrees to x-axis. Okay. So again, velocity of A with respect to B is the velocity of A when B is held fixed. Okay. So if you hold B fixed, then you observe that A is going to move at an angle of 30 degrees to the x-axis. In fact, it moves towards the it moves in, well, if you think of the x-axis this way, it moves this way. 30 degrees. So you know the direction of that relative velocity. You don't know the magnitude. So I'm going to write this as VA with respect to B, that is the magnitude, times the direction. So I'm going to write the unit vector along 30 degrees to the x-axis in the way I've shown here. So that vector is pointing in the negative x direction, right? If you resolve it, it's negative, sorry, negative x direction here and negative y direction. So it's going to be cosine of 30 degrees. That's the component in the x direction. But since it's in the negative direction, that's minus cosine 30 i. And the y component is sine 30. But that's in also in the negative direction. So it's minus sine 30 j. Okay. So velocity is the magnitude times the unit vector. So I, that's how I wrote the velocity of A with respect to B. So this comes out to be VBI plus VA with respect to B. Cosine of 30, I think, is uh, sine of 60. So that's 0.866i. Sine 30 is half. So I'm going to take all the items together. So VB minus 0.866 VA with respect to B, I minus 0.5 VA with respect to BJ. Okay, so that, that equation there, there are two unknowns, the velocity of B and velocity of A with respect to B. So in order to find those two values, I need to generate at least two equations. Okay, so the first 
thing I'm going to do is use the conservation of momentum. Okay, it says that summation m i v i is equal to sorry, it's a constant. So in this case, uh, the initial velocity m b is zero. Initial velocity of a is zero. So the initial momentum is zero, and the final momentum is going to be m b uh, v b plus m a v a. Okay, so there is an there's an issue with using the conservation of momentum in this case. So conservation of momentum is always true, but remember it has to be uh, it has to be in such a way so that the internal forces are kept internal to the system. So when I write the MIVI for a for a system consists of two particles, then the forces have to be internal. Now in this case, there are actually three things involved. That is a block. There is a ramp and there's a flow, there's a ground. Okay, so when this when this block moves on the ramp, it actually also presses against the ground, and so there is an impulse between the ground and the ramp, and so uh, I cannot when I'm considering a system of these two masses, I cannot apply the conservation of angular momentum in the in the y direction. That's because there's an impulsive force from the ramp on the ground. Okay, so that's not a the force that force acting on from the ground to the ramp is not internal. It is external. So this equation here can only be written for the x direction and not for the y direction. So this is the only change. This has to be the x component. And the reason why I can write it for the x component is because uh, there is no horizontal force between the system consisting of the ramp and the block on the ground. The only force is in the normal direction. Is that clear? You can only write conservation of momentum if the internal forces or the impulsive forces are internal. In this case, the only the when I'm looking at the system of the block and the ramp, they they are interacting with the ground, right? And so there's a normal force, and that normal force is not internal to the system. Because I'm looking at the system consisting of only the block and the ramp, I'm not looking at the ground combined. So that normal force uh, will show up and it will not conserve momentum in the y direction. However, in the x direction, there is no interacting force between the two blocks and the ground. So I can write conservation of momentum in that direction. So MB, VB is, uh, let's see, VB is VBI. So that's the X component. MA, VAX. VAX is the X component of velocity of A. So that's VB minus 0.866 VA with respect to B. Okay, so this is uh, an equation where I know what MA, MB is. I don't know what VA, VB is. So I cannot solve for VA and VB. I need another equation. How can I get the second equation? So there's no friction. So can I apply conservation of energy? So conservation of energy, this is again the previous chapter, T1 plus V1 is T2 plus V2. So the initial kinetic energy, now this is for the complete system, okay? The whole subsystem of the two, two objects. The initial velocity is zero for both either, so that's zero. The initial potential energy, so there are two Two things, A and B. Does B doesn't have any potential energy because it's not moving against gravity; it's moving to the left. 
However, A does have potential energy, right? Because it's going to slide along the block. So the potential energy due to B is MB times G times the vertical descent height. So I need to find this height. So H, can you find H as a function of, you're given this 0.5. So H divided by 0.5 is tan of 30 degrees, right? So H is 0.5 tan of 30 degrees. Is that clear? I know 0.5, I know H, so I know the angle. So it's H is 0.530. So this thing here is H, sorry, 0.530, tan 30 degrees. The initial kinetic energy of, uh, well, so the final kinetic energy of B is MBVB square plus that of A is MA times the velocity of A, the magnitude. So there are two parts to it. Is it X component? which is VB minus 0.866 VA with respect to B square. Uh, plus there is a Y component, so that's going to be 0.5 square times VA with respect to B square. So I'm looking at this expression here, this square plus this square. Yeah. No, that's the potential energy stored in the. No, it's a. It's just a potential energy. So okay, so maybe the confusion is I did not write a datum. So my datum was this. So if my datum is that, then the question is what is the. Potential energy, it's basically that. It's MB is going to move down. B is going to move down the rank. Oh. Oh, yeah. Good, good catch. This should be A. Sorry about that. This is V point five square V A with respect to B square. Okay, so this expression here, we know M A, we know M B. Uh, oh, by the way, V two is the final potential energy, and since the datum is down there, the potential energy is zero. So this is the second expression. Uh, the unknowns are so one and two have two unknowns, V A, V B. So you can solve for those two unknowns. So what I get for V A is, V A is 1.866 I minus 1.25 J and V B is 0.31 J. Okay. It also happens that when you do the when you do the computations to find VA and VB, you can find A as a function of B by eliminating take one and two and eliminate. Um, you basically can use this expression here to find the relation between P and A. So if you use that expression, you get VB. Sorry, VA with respect to B is 8.1 VB, right? Because this expression here only has a VA and VB, and that's all equal to zero. This, the sum of these things is equal to zero. So VA with respect to B is that. So to find the distance, all we do is integrate, let's call this three. Integrate. So D S A B 
dt is vab equals dsb dt right yeah which part yeah so this is just simplifying this expression So B B is in the other direction. It's not going to be in the other direction. Oh, I get it. The final answer will be B. Oh, my bad. This is just just a it's a error on my part. I'm sorry. What about 8.1? We don't have 8.1. Uh, 8.1 is so once you get three, you got to shove it in two, and then you get uh, the expression for V and V B. Three comes from simplifying one, and if you put three in two, in this expression, you actually can solve for V and V B. So two equations. So one and two are two equations. How do you solve? You solve for simplify equation one. That's what I did here. I forgot to write it down earlier. Okay. The only thing left is we got to find the distance moved. It's time or five minutes more. Okay. So uh, we are told that a moves a distance. We know the distance a moves with respect to b. In fact, it moves this distance down. Okay. This distance s, let's call it s. This distance is s a with respect to b, right? And s a with respect to b is, if you if you look at this carefully, it comes out to be uh, 0.5 cosine of 30 degrees because this is the adjacent side and this is the hypotenuse. So If you know S A B, you can find. So when you integrate this, S A B is S P, and S A B is uh, this comes out to be 1 this is wrong so i forgot to write this 8.1 here oh this is what you are telling me okay my bad i thought you were telling me how you how i got this okay so sab is 8.1 sb is that right So I get SB is 7.1 centimeters. It doesn't move a lot. It just moves a couple of centimeters. Because I get this because I know SAB. SAB is 0.577 meters, which I just computed here. You any questions? All right. I'm going to do this demo, and I don't know if it will work well. Uh, I this is actually 